I don't think it's a very controversial claim to say that these two Macs right here are probably the best Macs that there have ever been. I'm talking about the new M2 MacBook Air and the not quite as new 14 inch MacBook Pro. This guy has been out a year now and it is still the best value Mac that you can get. Or at least I thought it was the best value Mac before the M2 MacBook Air came around. So the big question for today's video is, has the MacBook Air taken the crown as the best value Mac you can buy? And what distinctions arise in the day-to-day -day use of an M2 versus an M1 Pro machine? Well, today we're gonna unpack both of these guys and get to the bottom of it. So make sure to leave a like down below, get subscribed, and let's get into it. Whichever Mac you go for, today's video sponsor, Insta360, offers the perfect smart webcam, the Link. Link is designed for business professionals, educators, live streamers, and creators, or really anyone spending long amounts of time on video calls. Link is a compact and versatile camera that can mount on any display thanks to its built-in clip design and offers unparalleled image quality thanks to 4K 30fps video, industry-leading half-inch sensor, and even HDR capability. Link also has a built-in three-axis gimbal with AI that can track your movements to keep you in frame without you needing to adjust the angle at all, as well as AI zoom that can keep you framed in the shot perfectly. And with remote control offered via gestures rather than software, you don't have to open an application whenever you want to switch modes. Link also features a host of unique abilities such as desk view mode where it tilts down 45 degrees to show documented objects, overhead mode when placed at a 90 degree angle, and even portrait mode with uncropped 9 by 16 aspect ratio. If you want to check out Insta360 Link, check out the link down in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. So let's start this video with a reality check. If you are shopping for a new MacBook right now, then these two are probably at the top of your list. Of the four total MacBooks that Apple offers right now, the M2 MacBook Air, M2 MacBook Pro, the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, I think these two are the clear choices. The M2 MacBook Pro, well, that has its uses for some cases, but not for most. So these two really represent the best of both of Apple's tiers the entry level and the higher end. And specifically right now, when you're talking about actually living day to day with the MacBook Air or the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, there's a lot. But where I want to start today is with the screens because let's be honest, we're gonna talk about some performance figures, about some benchmarks and about value per dollar. But I think the screen is the most important feature of any laptop because that is the one thing that you will be using all the time. And the 14 inch is quite simply the best display overall of any laptop that money can buy. And I know that's maybe a bold claim because there are OLED panels out there. There are 15 inch panels. There are 4K panels out there. And you might be able to say, hey, you combine all of those things. Is that not better? than what Apple has here. And frankly, I, I don't think so because this display has a combination of extremely great color accuracy, extremely high dynamic range, really, really good mini LED that doesn't suffer from burn-in, plenty of pixel density without being arguably unnecessary, and 120 Hertz variable refresh rate. Like, when you put all of those things together, not just one on its own, I genuinely do not believe that there is another laptop that can actually be better at all of these things. And that's just talking about the screen specs, not how it's implemented in this form factor. However, I think if we're gonna talk about form factor, I do have to give the nod to the M2 MacBook Air because to be perfectly honest, since this thing came out in July, I have gravitated 
to the M2 MacBook Air more than you might think I would, because it just has that perfect blend of being ridiculously thin, ridiculously light and portable, and just, you know, chuck it around, put it in a backpack, carry it on its own, it is so light and chuckable and throwable. I don't know why I keep talking about it like it's a Frisbee, but I don't know, there's something about it. And the 14 inch MacBook Pro I think is arguably a better hybrid in terms of being portable and powerful, but there is something to be said for just raw portability. There are still people who will go to battle defending the 12 inch Retina MacBook, even though the CPUs died, the SSDs died, the butterfly keyboard was bad, the battery life wasn't really that good, the display delaminated, the USB-C ports burnt out, the display hinges were known to wear out sometimes, they were so thin that they got damaged really easily, they were also cataclysmically slow and they overheated as well because the cooling solution wasn't really enough. Wow, that's, um, that's basically everything. But even despite all of that, people still like it. I still like it, I have one. But you know what else you can't ignore? Ports, and this guy's got a lot of them, okay? I think the 14 inch MacBook Pro has the perfect balance. We've got three Thunderbolt ports, HDMI, SD card, and MagSafe. However, if I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys, I don't really find myself using MagSafe very often, if at all. I have three MacBooks with MagSafe, the Air, the 14 inch and the 16 inch. And the only time I use the MagSafe charger is because I have the 16 inch with the 140 watt plugged in at my desk. And so if it's there, I might as well use it. But I don't bring it with me when I travel because again, it can only charge the MacBook. If I bring an iPad, a portable power bank to charge my phone, or even a multi-port charger for phone, Apple Watch, AirPods, all of that stuff. It's gonna be USB-C, so I might as well just bring one thing. However, in the case of the MacBook Air, I think MagSafe is actually legitimately valuable for two main reasons. Number one, it frees up your USB-C ports. You only have two of them. So it's undeniably useful that you can charge this MacBook, fast charge it even, while still having access to both ports, unlike the previous M1 MacBook Air. But the other reason is that you can actually option this thing with a dual port USB-C charger. And that means that you can bring one charger, have MagSafe here, and then have another port for a lightning cord for your phone or a USB for your iPad. That I think is legitimately useful. And now that I think of it, why don't they have that for the 14 inch or the 16 inch? I feel like I would legitimately carry a MagSafe charger around if my charger had multiple ports that I could use for other stuff. Right, so in terms of everyday usability, I'm afraid we're at a bit of a tie here. The 14 inch definitely wins on ports and screen, but the MacBook Air wins on convenience and portability. But of course there's more than screens and form factors that go into your purchase decision, so now we're gonna have to talk about performance. It's simply unavoidable. And the, the simple answer is the M1 Pro is faster. Now, the M2 chip in short bursty workloads can actually get pretty close to the base model 8-core CPU in the M1 Pro. However, that is a bit of a misnomer because if you are going to be doing anything remotely intensive for more than a couple of minutes, the MacBook Air is going to fall off as you saturate the heatsink. The M1 Pro can just keep going and going and going. Now, I do have a criticism of the way that the M Pro handles its thermals. And that is, I've talked about this before, that Apple just does not want to let the fans spin on this thing. Obviously, there was a lot of criticism thrown at the MacBook Air for getting over 100 degrees Celsius, but actually the 14 inch MacBook Pro does that too. But it's not because its cooling system is inadequate, it's because Apple doesn't wanna use it. If you just start running Cinebench, the temperature curves on both of these machines by default look very, very similar, and that can be a little bit concerning. You're sitting there running these machines at over 100 degrees. However, if you manually kick in the fans on the 14 inch, the temperatures go way down to like under 80 degrees, which is seriously impressive for a laptop. But crucially, it's kind of loud, and that's why Apple doesn't want to do it. But since we are talking about real world use cases, Let's be honest, how often, what percentage of your workflow is going to be spent really taking advantage of that performance? This is something that I have grappled with particularly 
on MacBooks since I have transitioned away from portable devices for my editing workflow. Probably 95% of the time, the MacBook Air does the trick just fine. I don't need any more performance. However, that 5% of the time when I'm using this thing and I don't have access to something more powerful, it does present a bit of an obstacle. I don't know that it's an obstacle that you would necessarily need to spend hundreds of dollars to overcome. Basically, the way that I would choose between them if I was making a purchase decision would be to actually sit down and be real with yourself. Don't get caught up in the marketing hype or the benchmarks, but sit down and say, this is what I need my computer to do. This is how powerful I need it to be for this portion of my time using it. And this is how much it costs to get that performance. If you're buying either of these two laptops right now, you're probably not paying Apple's full sticker price because you don't have to. This base model MacBook Air has been going on sale pretty regularly for $1099 or even $999. That's the same price as the M1 MacBook Air and at that point, I think it's a no-brainer. Now the 14 inch, the base model has been going for $1599 pretty much consistently for the past month. I think that is an unbeatable deal and represents an absolutely fantastic value. So if you do need to pick between these, you know, $1099 versus $1599, is this worth an extra $500 to get those ports, that display, the extra performance, a little bit better battery life, very, very slightly in my experience? I don't know. To me personally, I would take that, absolutely. The screen alone, I think, is a couple hundred dollars. However, I definitely don't think you'd be making the wrong decision going for a machine that's two thirds the price, even with that sale included. So when it comes down to it, living every single day with one of these devices, I actually have found that they are very complementary. Pretty much every weak point in one is addressed in the other. Honestly, what I would do is sit down and make a pros and cons list. Which one fits your budget? Which one has a better display? Which one has more ports, performance? And whichever one checks off more of those boxes, that's probably the best decision for you. So I know a lot of people have wanted me to say, oh, the 14 inch is better than the MacBook Air, or the MacBook Air is now the best deal with the 14 inch not as good. But that's just not possible. These machines are very, very meticulously designed to not overlap that much, but to be very, very close. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As usual, thank you guys so much for watching. I have had a ton of fun making videos and content on these devices, and I'm hoping that we'll get some new M2 Pro stuff pretty soon. But until that happens, make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below, and I'll see you in the next one.